As a researcher, you dedicate your life to pushing the boundaries of knowledge, but how can you share that knowledge more widely? Public interest in science has never been higher. According to a recent opinion poll, more than 80% of Europeans want to find out more about new scientific discoveries and technological developments. In fact, scientists are the most trusted group in society. People want researchers like you to help us make sense of our complex world. I'm Tony Lockett, Head of Communication at the European Research Council. In this video, we'll be looking at the importance of science communication and sharing some advice. The video is particularly aimed at researchers who have a grant from the ERC, but we hope that many of the principles and practical tips will be relevant more generally. If you've been selected for an ERC grant, congratulations, you've earned a significant distinction in your field of research. The ERC grant agreement includes some minimum communication requirements. In particular, you should acknowledge the ERC grant in all your communication materials, use the EU emblem and the ERC logo, include the standard text acknowledging funding, and report back to us at the ERC on your outreach and communication activities. You can contact your ERC scientific officer if you have any questions concerning the acknowledgement of funding. You may already have decided to set aside part of your grant for communication activities when you applied for funding. If you choose to add a science communication dimension to your project at a later stage, after signing the grant agreement, you may want to explore the possibility of reallocating part of your budget. Please contact our grant management department if you'd like to discuss this. So how can you get started? The first step in effective communication is to ask yourself some basic questions. Begin by considering what you aim to achieve. Do you want to attract additional funding, influence the policy agenda, inspire young people or make media headlines? Take the time to define your objectives as clearly as possible before starting to communicate. Secondly, consider who your audience is. In communication terms, there's no such thing as the general public, and the more specific you can be, the better. You'll need to adapt your approach depending on whether you want to speak, for example, to experts, students, policymakers, journalists, or businesses. Next, think about your main message. What's the key takeaway from your research that you want your audience to remember? Be concise, clear, and consistent in your messaging. With well-defined objectives, a precisely targeted audience, and a clear main message, you'll be better equipped to communicate effectively and achieve the best results. Next, consider which channel will be most effective for delivering your message to your intended audience. Think about where they get their information and what types of content they prefer. Are you able to connect with them in person at physical events, exhibitions or science museums? How can you use your website and social media most effectively to engage with a wider audience online? Are there trends that might be relevant for your audience, such as the growing popularity of podcasts or short-form video? Each channel is unique and you'll need to think strategically about how to use them in the most effective way. For example, props can help to make a presentation more entertaining. Is there a physical object or a meaningful image that can help you to explain your research topic? Videos and photos are a must for grabbing people's attention on social media. It's easier than ever today to produce audio-visual content with a smartphone. Consider investing in a decent microphone and some lighting to achieve quality results and be careful of copyright issues if you're reusing existing images. Press releases can be an effective tool when you have important scientific findings or breakthroughs to share with the media. Bear in mind that journalists will be more likely to pick up your news if you've already built a connection with them previously. It's important to remember that your audience may not have the same level of expertise as you. Avoid jargon, technical terms and abstract ideas. Use simple language 
visuals and examples. Anecdotes and metaphors can be helpful too. Another useful tip is to tell a story. Share your personal journey, the challenges you faced and how you overcame them. This approach can help you make you and your work more accessible. Lastly, be open to feedback and willing to engage in conversation. Listening is an important communication skill. If you want more tips, the EU-funded Quest project has created a range of handy toolkits for science communicators. Most universities and research institutions have a press and communication office that can provide valuable advice and assistance. The communications team in your institution should be able to help you craft effective press releases, provide guidance on social media strategy, and offer tips on how to engage with journalists and the media. You could also ask them if they offer communications training. The ERC communication team can also help to share your research results with a wider audience across Europe and beyond. If you have news to share, please contact us in advance so that we can collaborate and plan how to best support each other's communication efforts. At the ERC, we're delighted that many of the researchers we fund are active science communicators. By reaching out to different audiences, they're helping to promote not just their own work, but also public trust in science more generally. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, please check out our other videos for more science communication tips and examples. Yeah.